I'm going to try to show you the bottom piston assembly, the main works of the pump. I've shown you how to do the top end, the bearings that you need, and all that stuff. So this is kind of like one of the final parts. This is the piston, and I cut the main washers out of a serving tray. You see the serving tray, cafeteria serving tray. I cut those washers out of that. You need four for each piston. I used an inch and an eighth hole saw, and then I chucked them up in a bolt backed up with two nuts and rounded them off a little bit to relieve the sharp edges on a drill press. So, first thing you got to have is a carriage bolt. I preferred galvanized because it's going to rust any, but it'll probably rust anyway, but galvanized is probably better. This is half of a coupling for uh, water irrigation pipe, black pipe. That's how they join it. I use it for several things. One is I'm going to use it to connect the piston to the push-pull rod, which is going to be half-inch PVC pipe. And if you have to extend that half-inch pipe, you can use this by putting it in the same way, and I'm going to show you how to do that. If you need to go down 10, 20 feet, you can use this to connect that. And the reason you need to do that is because you can't connect the half-inch pipe with a regular half-inch pipe coupling because it won't go through the one inch pipe. But if you couple make all your couplings with this, it'll it'll go through your pipe and slide up and down just fine. So let's try and see if we can put this together with one hand. And not being able to see, I'm not going to be able to do it. First thing, put that in and you want the barbs facing this way. And you want a nut washer then one of your fiber washers, which is the cafeteria tray, a leather, cut from an old glove, back on old glove, then two washers from the old lunch tray, another leather, another washer, and then a self-locking nut. You don't want this to come apart down in the well or wherever you're going to use it. You don't want it to come apart. There's several things to remember here. When you get it together, you want to be sure that you bevel all the edges of all the pipes that you put this into. And I used the Brummel tool you see right there with this sander right on it. Worked really well. This is what it looks like when it's put into the pipe. And I can't see it very well because my reflection is off. Okay, there you are. Okay, these leathers have to face towards the bottom. You heat the pipe here. And you put, shove this whole assembly right inside there. Be sure that your barbs are faced so that when you want to pull it out, it won't pull out. And I, and I guarantee you, once you heat that, it's going to really take some force. Once you push it in, it's going to take some force to pull it back out. You just can't get it back out without heating it. So there's not much need to worry about that. Here's another important thing. Besides rounding off all the edges on those lunch tray pieces so that you have round edges, the reason you have two in the center is that so this piece here has room to lay flat and not overlap this other piece of leather. Because if it overlaps, it's probably going to be too tight and won't slide up and down inside your one inch pipe. So now you have an idea where to go and how to put that together. I'm going to assemble mine and see if I can get it out in the field today and get it working. Uh, had a, two prototypes and both of them worked fairly well. This one I'm just trying to do a little better and share the knowledge pretty much uh, as I can. 
I think that's it. Thank you. The ugly duckling is in place. Uh, maybe temporarily, but we'll see. It is pumping water from this pond back to that pond. I expect to have it circulating water for the blue tanks over there. But for now, I want to see what happens. It's visible from the road. Uh, see what the county says. I'm sure somebody's going to grumble about something. They always do. But I figure this thing can save me probably thirty or forty dollars a month on my electric bill. And if I am planting three of them, if uh, if I can get all three up and running and nobody grumbles then I'm going to probably be saving over a hundred dollars a month electric bill on fish pond pumps. Don't think my wife's really too happy with it though. She's very money conscious and if it ends up being durable enough to work for a few months, then she'll be happy. She see that electric bill come down. how durable this PVC is going to be. I don't know if it's going to last a long time or for just a short while or what. But I know it won't run all night because we usually only have trade wind showers. They build up in the morning and taper off about seven or eight at night. So add another two hours of wind maybe. have to put some guide wires on it if the wind gets bad enough. I do have it high enough that I can walk up to it and not get slapped in the head by the blades. Maybe a little more work to do on it. If it works, I'll probably disguise the barrel as a well and put some bricks around it or some cinder block or something. Make it look like a well. What I'm doing is I'm actually siphoning the water out of the pond into the barrel. The barrel won't run over because it's above the water level. And then I'm going to use it to run the water over to the pond. I'm going to hook up the hoses and stuff shortly. Won't be today though. Okay. Here's a shot of the windmill from the house. It's out there doing its thing. It's like it's searching for wind a little bit. This is what it's supposed to do. The 
the dog's happy. Pretty soon those blue tubs will have plenty of fresh water. <laughs>